Do you have a hole in your plaster wall and not sure how to fix it? Come along with me and I'll show you how to fix it professionally, quick and easy. Let's go. Hey guys, Musa here from Quantum Home Improvements and Solutions. Welcome back to the channel. So today I've got with me my friend Brian. Hey y'all. So Brian has got a bit of a problem and uh, he's asked me if I can repair this hole in the wall. And so this is a cavity wall uh, and the Dubrock is only 10 mil and uh, very easy to break. And so I'm gonna show today how we're gonna prepare it and do it professionally and strong enough where it's not gonna break again, well not easily. Apparently you've got some kids that enjoy basketball. Uh, that's right, so I mean, one of the kids, I won't say who, uh, had a couple of mates <laughs> over and they're just fucking around a bit and then, you know, you know how big boys mm. go. <laughs> Boom, you know, and suddenly there's a hole in the wall. Yeah. Um, you might have to move it, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a bit of an issue with this area because it's a cavity sliding door. Brian, if you can just open that door and you can see that the door goes well within the back of the plasterboard. And so what I've got to do is actually put a piece of timber inside, cut all this area out and, uh, and place a new piece and then, and then repair it. Okay, so we also have another problem in the ensuite. Uh, so we're in the toilet area, it's a bit tight in here, but um, there's a problem with the flick mixer in the shower. And so the plumber came and cut in the toilet area to access the uh, flick mixer and change it over. So this area needs to be repaired as well. And so usually a flick mixer, you can change the barrel from uh, the inside uh, without having to take the wall out. But unfortunately, um, with the builder did actually put uh, probably a lower quality. And so now it's been upgraded and it can be fixed from the other side. So we don't need to have this accessible anymore. So I'm gonna fix this at the same time. The only issue with this is that it's villa board and also this villa board has been painted. So I will use my trowel and scratch that paint so the uh, plaster will stick to that better. Okay, so now we'll start off with this hole. So what we've got to do is feel inside to see how far the crack has gone. So I can feel it's roughly about here, about that high up. And on this side here, I can feel it's roughly about here. Okay, so it's not too bad there. Now, using the level, well then, I've got the level upside down purposely so I can rule a line. So I've got to make sure I go past all that damaged area. Make sure that the level is actually level. Draw a line. And we know that's roughly about down to here. Again, just get that level. So the reason we're leveling this off is so when we cut the next piece, we'll know that the piece will be square. Now I'm cutting a bit of fairly big area because it looks like there's a fair amount of damage here. So just using my plasterboard saw, I'll just pop that anywhere there. Just give a light tap, don't go too hard. And then just cut that through. Try to stay on the line as best you can. So remembering when you are cutting into a cavity slider that the door is out of the way. Now this door is totally shut. So again, we'll start at another position. So you can see how flimsy it is when you've got plasterboard on a cavity slider. So you've got to be really careful around those areas. So there is timber behind here. So be very careful. We'll just take it here. Okay, an extra fact, I might just cut that short a little. I'll take that damaged part out. Here it is here. I can see that timber much better. What I might do is actually just cut on the timber so I won't go all the way in. I'll just scribe it first. So just going deeper and deeper. Until I get all the way through the plasterboard. And don't panic if you touch the timber. 
it's not going to hurt it. Okay. I'll just cut the top section out in a moment. All right, so that's pretty good. I'm going to clean up all the edges. Make sure that looks good. I will now take a measurement. And I'll take measurements both ends. So that there is 300 and, uh, 302 mil. So just over one foot. And that's 302 mil. So that means I was dead on level. So it's 302 mil. I'm gonna cut it actually uh, 297. Okay, so the width is 398 and 398 width, I'm gonna make it 393. So these are the measurements I'm gonna cut. Okay, so now we'll cut a piece of plasterboard. Now you can buy offcuts from Bunnings uh, or your local hardware store. I will put a link below uh, for that. And so um, this is 10 mil plasterboard and we'll just measure out the width. So it's um, 393 is the size we're gonna make. Measured in two spots, 393. And then the height, which is 297. We'll just cut this section off with a saw. It's done. I'll describe it first. And then just cut the back end with the Stanley knife. There we go. Beautiful. Sits in nicely. Okay, now so the next step is to put a piece of timber in there to screw from this side and this side to lock it into place. I'll just take a measurement. I'll just maybe add 50 mil to it. So I make that piece 450 long. So this timber is a 19 by 40 mil timber and it's the same thickness as the timbers used in the cavity slider, which is really important to do. Because when you open that door, you don't want it to hit this timber as it's sliding past. So I just measure out 450 twice, because we need two pieces. Okay, so the next stage is to put this timber into place. Uh, I will use some stud adhesive and I'll screw them into place with this bugle head. It's a six gauge by 30 mil long. So we've got two different timbers here. We've got the repair timber, which I'll put a screw in, but then I'm gonna put another screw right next to it where the stud is, and that's gonna strengthen that up a bit. Just putting a little bit of stud adhesive just on the top end. So don't leave too much stud adhesive on there because when you put the plasterboard on, uh, it will spill over, it will squeeze through the other side and we don't want that. Okay, so now we'll then just place this piece on. Nice fit. So now you can see how much strength that's got. That's it. All right, so now the next part is to put some tape on here and plaster the whole thing. But before we do that, we're gonna take off just a bit of that edge there. This tends to stick out when we're plastering. So we'll just take that edge off. Okay, so what's important to note is that the repair plasterboard is not sticking out further than the actual wall. So you want them to be fairly flush. So now I'm gonna place on a self adhesive glass fiber tape. So you can either use paper or tape. I prefer to use tape in this case. Paper can be a little bit tricky to put on when you're doing a repair. And you put it on, just go past the area you're trying to repair just by a little. I go around about an inch. Okay, so you pull all the way around and make sure that it's stuck properly. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some base coat cement on. Uh, it's gonna be a two part mix. This is the base coat cement. Uh, this is the best way to do it. And then I will put a top coat after two coats of base cement. 
Um, you can buy a two-in-one, uh, but let me tell you, it's never a good result. They're very hard to sand down, and you always get a bit of a bulge in your wall. So in other words, you'll always see the, where it's been repaired. I'm gonna make this where you'll never see the repair, and I'll show you how to do that, and it's in a three-stage system. So the plasterboard that I do use and all the products are made by Cineat, and Cineat is a Belgium company. They've just recently taken over Borel, and uh, so Borel is using the brand name Knuff. So I buy my products from Plastermaster in Mich Mitchenberry. I find the guys really good there, uh, and they're actually selling the Cineat brand. So this is a base coat I'm gonna be using, uh, and it's very easy to make. So you just mix some in a separate container, place a little bit of water, not too much. You can always add more. a little bit more so you want a nice soft creamy consistency but not wet so this base coat I'm using is 45 45 representing how many minutes that it'll last before it goes off so now I'll just put it on the hawk I'll mix it in even better and what you do now is just place a little bit on don't overdo it so you can see I'm not putting too much on purposely we will be coming back and doing another coat Okay, so you do not leave that the way I've just left it then. You take it all back off and take all the excess back off. I'll just come a little bit lower in there. There we go. So you can see I've taken a lot of that off. Uh, you do not put too much. We don't want to sand this down too much. So it's really important that we don't apply more than we should. Okay, so that's looking good. I think I'll just keep it there. There will be some little pieces that are sticking out. We'll scrape that off later as it gets a little dry. Okay, so there's not much room in here. So what I'm gonna do here is scar this villa board. And scar it really well. All right, so just clean all that off. So again, I'll put some more tape. The cement's still quite nice and wet. Okay, so that's enough for the first coat. Okay, so it will take about two, three hours, depending on the time of year doing this and how cold or how hot it is. But this is now dry and it's ready for a second layer of the base coat cement. So what I need to do is just, uh, you can feel some of the rough edges. I need to just slide the scraper across. So just lightly do that, don't dig in. Okay, so now I'll just put the second layer. Now as you're doing your layers, you've got to go wider and wider every time. So uh, there's the point where I went last time, so I'm gonna go a little bit wider. Then on the last one, I'm gonna use a really wide trowel. So now I'm just going to use a winder trowel just to take all that excess off. Now you won't be able to get those lines out, so you just get as best as you can. And we will get that out when we do the top coat. Okay, so now it's all dry, uh, the base coat, and we're ready to put the top coat on. And what I do sometimes is also just put a level to see what the gaps are behind. And this is looking really good. There's literally no gaps. So this is already pre-mixed. So I'll put some on my hawk. So that looks a lot more creamier, uh, a lot better than when it first comes out of the bucket. Okay, so I'm gonna use the wider trowel. Now this is a lot easier to apply than the base coat. And this compound is a much softer compound. It's not a cement. It's only a topping coat. The only problem with topping coat is once you put it on and it's dry and sanded, 
you need to paint over it pretty quickly because it's very easy to scratch and can be damaged very, very easily. And so the paint that you put on this needs to be a sealer undercoat, not just any undercoat, but a sealer undercoat. So you can see here, I'm going a lot wider than I did last time. Okay, so now I'm just taking the excess off, but you don't take all the excess off. You've got to leave some for sanding. There will be marks shown on here, some lines, but you leave them in. They'll sand out really easy and I'll show you that later. And I use three types of sanding blocks. Uh, I use a coarse, medium and a fine. Okay, there we go. That's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. So that's ready. So in around a, uh, probably two hours or so, uh, it's ready to sand down. So if you're in a hurry, you can actually use a heat gun. All right, so I've let this sit for a little, but I now I'm gonna dry it just a little bit faster. And I'm not gonna put this too close and I'm not gonna keep it still at one point because it will crack it. So I'm gonna just do a very slow dry for this one. You can let it sit a bit closer when it's a base coat, but this is a top coat and you'll see it drying pretty quickly. You can see just this part here starting to uh, look a little bit lighter. So now it's all finished drying and it looks really good. Okay, so there's one really th important thing to note when you are sanding. And now even though I'm starting with a coarse, I'm gonna do it very lightly and just touch it. I'm not gonna take too much off. And now I'm gonna use the medium. Now with the medium, I will go around the edges and take the tapering off the edge of those. And so I'm gonna blend the edges into the paint. And now I'll just go to the fine paper. And that's finished off beautifully. And it feels nice and smooth. Okay, it's done. And it didn't take that much effort. Brian, what do you think? Oh, it's phenomenal. You're a true master, Musa. My goodness. Uh, Brian actually had to take off and do the runs with, with the kids, so he didn't actually see the full procedure. So uh, he's gonna go back and watch the video probably 10, 20 times. It's, a, it's <laughs> deliberate, it's deliberate. <laughs> and uh, take note, he's actually moved the hoop. Uh, which is a really good thing. What I did discover when I was repairing the wall, that it really was soft. And what had happened, because there was a hole in the middle, uh, it lost that integrity. So now, you can actually see it doesn't vibrate. One thing I didn't do on video, uh, I didn't put a mask on. Now this is only a very small area to sand, so really be careful if you are sanding a large volume of top coat, um, it's not good to breathe this in. Uh, one of the biggest killers in the building trade is silicosis. Uh, and so anything with masonry or any powders, if you inhale them, it will damage your lungs. So please be careful with that. So this is the first time I've used Cinea Top Coat and I was really impressed with it. It dried really well, it sanded easily, uh, and I was very happy with that. So I'd like to thank the guys from Plaster Master for their advice and for all the help they've given me over the years. Uh, they're really good guys. And so I will put a link below for Plaster Master and Cineot uh, if you're interested to, uh, to uh, deal with them. So that's the end of the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'd ask if you have any comments, leave them below and I will get back to you. And I'd also ask you, please consider to subscribe, hit the like button and share the video. And there's many more to come. See you guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a blooper.